Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Muddy Outdoors, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scentmaster, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scott Archery, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Scentlock, Deer Grow, Quiet Cat, Execute Scent Control, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Yeti Coolers, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. Today is the 4th of January and we've got a pretty good winter storm blowed in here uh, overnight. We're hoping for some good activity today. Uh, we're heading back to a, a corn food plot, one that we've hunted quite a bit. But we haven't been back in there for a week now. So I'm guessing that the deer are going to feel pretty relaxed in that area and hopefully with this cold temperature and these winds uh, they should come out early to feed. I'll bring you that whole hunt at the end of today's episode. Uh, we've got a couple of things we're going to do in the meantime though. First. We're going to join Jared Mills in eastern Iowa. Jared is hunting with his friend Chad, and they've targeted a really old buck on one of the properties that Jared has permission to hunt. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And also, Scott Pruka is going to be bringing us an update from his hunts over the past couple of days. So Drew and I are going to go back to the redneck blind, uh, 8 degrees out or 7 degrees out with a 20 plus mile per hour wind. It's going to feel good to be indoors uh, for this afternoon's hunt. We'll bring you all the action from the blind, and. Uh, Hopefully we can produce uh, either Lucky or one of the other mature bucks on the farm. Well, it's the afternoon of December 30th and uh, my buddy Chad and I are all set up in the blind for this afternoon's hunt. My strategy has changed somewhat since uh, the early part of the season. Uh, now that we're into late muzzler season, uh, I still have my bow with me and uh, that's going to be my first choice. Uh, but if there's one of these target deer that are out of range, I do have the muzzler in here with me as well so that's the reason we're wearing orange tonight. Um, but when I say target deer, uh, it's changed up a little bit. Um, there's four bucks that I know of that are at least five years old, and a couple of them are older than that. And uh, those are the bucks I want to take off this farm. And the primary reason, there's a couple reasons, but the primary reason is the number of good three and four year olds that we have coming up on this farm. It's been obvious all year with my encounters of uh, some of these older deer. They're definitely the dominant ones on this farm. Uh, every time I saw them, they were you know, stealing another buck's doe or running a, another deer off the food plot, whatever it may be. Uh, but they were definitely dominant. And uh, I don't want any of these good three and four year old deer leaving this farm because we've seen it a lot uh, in the past where some of these bigger deer leave the farm around that four and a half year old uh, age range. So uh, my strategy this late season is get rid of some of those older dominant bucks. Uh, which means I'm be passing some of the four and a half year old better antlered bucks like George Brett and uh, also Crown Royal who I had a, a good encounter with the other day so it won't be easy passing up the, the larger antlered bucks for some of these smaller ones but I think it's a good strategy for this farm down the road so that's our goal tonight we're sitting over uh, a bunch of standing beans and corn primarily beans there's a lot of stocks out here but uh, primary food is the beans underneath and uh, today's the coldest day of December we've had uh, with the wind chill I think it's around two or three degrees so it, it's cold I would expect these deer to be hitting these beans uh, last night I sat on a food plot not too far from here and I uh, saw quite a few deer uh, just nothing mature so hoping the move over this plot is going to make the difference and uh, hopefully this cold weather is going to drive these deer to eat so We'll see what happens. Um, like I said, we got both weapons, so hopefully we'll at least get a shot at something. Uh, there's four or five does that just worked their way into the plot. It's still really early in the afternoon, so we're expecting good things tonight. Interview is like 220. 
some dirt out in those beans over here too. Three dogs. Yeah. Yeah, that's crusty. Body's out off the early. How far do you think he is? Uh, I got my rangefinder. about four o'clock and uh, one of our target bucks a buck we call crusty really old buck yeah he, uh, he just stepped out so I'm hoping he'll work his way into bow range but if he stays out in gun range I'm gonna let Chad shoot him so we're gonna try to get situated here and see what he does We just climbed down from the blind, got all our stuff gathered up, uh, looked at the footage, shot looked pretty good, uh, just behind that front shoulder, so we haven't found blood yet, uh, but we're just getting to the spot where he left the plot, so we're going to try to pick up some, some blood on the taller grass where it might be easier to see, but based on the footage, he shouldn't be too far. Well, here's Krusty. He uh, didn't go far at all just right down the hill uh, but we ran out of daylight so I'd go back to the truck and get the recovery light got a tag on him and brought him out here in the open for a better view but just a, an old warrior of a buck um, but I think based on trail cam pictures we we're guessing them what seven at least seven yeah, this year. six and a half to seven I'd say yeah, definitely one of those deer I mean I filmed him a couple times uh, he was a bully buck he, he was kind of the dominant deer on Every, every encounter I had with him, he was uh, running other bucks off. So uh, this is my strategy for this late season is to kill some of these older, uh, small antler dominant bucks in hopes that uh, some of the bucks with, with potential stick around next year. So I, so I still have both my tags. I was very happy to let Chad shoot this deer tonight. Uh, he's got a lot of history with a lot of deer on these farms and he's the one that helped me get permission on this farm too. So. Uh, it's cool to film him. Uh, that's the first first time we've actually filmed each other uh, get a kill, so that was fun. And uh, like I said, there's still some season left, so got one of these bucks out of the way and hoping to get maybe one or two more uh, before January 10th. So we'll see what happens. Got plenty of food, obviously, had a lot of deer tonight. Uh, so 
hopefully we'll have another good hunt and get another old buck on the ground before the season's over. Chad's hunt demonstrates something that we've learned only too well over the years, and that's the importance of having a really good food source during the late season. Ideally, it would be some type of an unharvested crop. That seems to work the best for us, uh, but even in places where you've got harvested crop, if there's still plenty of grain left in the field, the deer are really going to be attracted to that spot. The spot that we're sitting on tonight is a classic example of that, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how I was able to maintain corn in such a small food plot. A lot of times if you plant a one acre food plot to corn, the deer will wipe it out during the summer. If you have any decent density of deer at all, they're going to catch that uh, corn at about the time when the ears start to silk and they nip the tops off all those ears. Then you end up with a really nice looking stand of corn with no ears in it. So to combat that, we put a hot zone fence around this one acre food plot. Uh, this is a product from Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions. and. Uh, you can click the link and you can check it out, but uh, Scott Pricka talked about it last week and it's been a big help to us uh, on this plot, especially this year. Uh, we put that fence up shortly after the corn started to come up and uh, kept the fence uh, wired and hot until the ears were starting to form past that silking stage. Then we took the fence down and then you know the deer left it alone pretty much until they started to eat the corn itself after the ears had hardened. So keep that in mind uh, if you're trying to protect grain in a small plot like this, uh, you're going to have a really poor success unless you do something um, similar to what we did with the hot zone fence. Now we're going to catch up with Scott Pruka and see how his hunt from the wagon's been going. We're back in the red wagon on January 2nd. Um, we're out here early. It's about probably quarter to two right now. So uh, most of the activity has been in the last hour. So uh, we're going to sit tight. We, um, we did see Flat Top Junior last night. Um, we had three young bucks down in the creek, you know, like about two and a half year olds. And we had a couple does out earlier. The, those bucks in the creek never made it, but I looked behind us to the north in the big cornfield and I see a deer walking across and sure enough it's Flat Top Junior. And um, I'm not even sure what he was doing. I don't know if he's making his way up to the turnips over the hill or I don't know he just he wasn't eating in the corn he was just kind of slowly working his way across the field and he'd look back this way and I don't know I'm not sure but he just came out of the wrong part of the field so he comes out like that tonight in this end and we uh, hopefully will be in business. Gonna come right through the gate. There's no other deer around here. Could not be a better 
my situation. So, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready. I got this side window open so I can shoot when he comes either way out the gate or right alongside the camera. And he starts coming up towards the fence and he starts veering to the left. To his left, in front of me this way. So, I thought, well, I better try and open this side window. I still have inside a 40 yard shot, even, even if he's on the other side of the fence. And, um, I start opening his window when he's behind one of those cedar trees. And I didn't realize it, but there was a whole pile of does on the other side of the fence down here. They saw me open up the blind. All well, heck breaks loose. They take off running down the creek. And he takes me off up the creek as well. Unbelievable. I thought I was going to get it down here tonight. <sighs> I've been in this red wagon three times. Four times in the last two weeks, and I've seen that deer three of the four times. He was coming in here somehow or another tonight. We actually had a picture of him jumping the fence, I, I mean, right next to the gate. I don't know why he would jump the fence instead of going through the gate one night, but... <sighs> that was very close. Again. We got half an hour left in the evening hunt and it's been pretty slow tonight surprisingly slow given the conditions but uh, you know half an hour is still a lot of time so anything can happen and if something pops out here that's interesting we'll definitely bring it to you before the end of this episode but uh, otherwise I'll see you right back here again next week we've got another good late season hunt for you so thanks for joining us this week we'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail and remember to always dream big